Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat, and with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way, I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess a new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv. You're listening to Revolution Radio. Welcome, <coughs> listeners from America and across the world. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. And I thank all of you for taking the time to join us this evening. I'm honored to have as guest Dr. Preston Bailey. Dr. Bailey, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, well, I thank you for uh, your willingness to come on and to join us and show, and I'm definitely looking forward to speaking with you about all of your incredible research and the books that you've written and the counseling that you've done. If you would, Dr. Bailey, please share with the listening audience uh, your information, your website, uh, also, your book and a little bit about it. I, uh, yes. Um, I was a pastor for forty-three years, and I retired a few years ago. And uh, through all those years, I've uh, counseled, and and now I, I uh, mainly counsel, and I usually uh, counsel people who are coming out of the Illuminati. Uh, the Illuminati is one of the 13 bloodlines uh, of the families of, of an ancient uh, family. And um, my website, where you can find out information of what I talk about, is uh, spiritualwarfarecenter.com. That's spiritualwarfare, uh, C-E-N-T-E-R.com. And I'm also a, a coach with uh, BrideMovement.com, uh, Bride uh, Ministries, that counsels uh, people with a DID or um, spiritual warfare issues. That's BrideMovement.com. And so since 1983, I've been counseling people uh, who were abused as a child uh, I used to be the chairman of the governor's task force on child abuse uh, so in 1983 uh, dissociative identity disorder was recognized by the American Psychiatric Association as uh, a mental disorder from trauma and abuse as a child uh, so what happens is uh, SRA DID means uh, dissociative identity disorder caused by satanic ritual abuse. So that means they traumatize and abuse this child and program them to create uh, what's called altered personalities uh, that the person may not remember whatever they do. Uh, you can you can study recent history, the last thirty years, of famous murderers or serial murderers who don't remember them uh, shooting the person that they assassinated, and that's characteristic of mind control programming. So that's predominantly what I what I do now. Well, this is a fascinating area of research, and especially now with all of the uh, the Pizzagate and the leaked emails and the interest that uh, has been placed upon 
the satanic ritual abuse and the links to the different politicians, the elites, and um, that this is nothing new. It's been going on for a very long time. It's been reported by individuals like uh, Senator John DeCamp in speaking about the the Franklin cover-up and things of that nature. Um, and he was the, one of the first to even point the finger at the Catholic priests and the cover-up. And we see even now, just recently, where they've spoken about 300-plus priests that were protected by the church and moved to different areas um, by the Roman Catholic Church, uh, and that this kind of thing has been perpetuated and that they paid off uh, even family members for a very long time that were abused and victimized by these Catholic priests. And so would you speak about that and also the the pizza gate and uh, and also the Franklin cover up just if you would uh, comment on those two things uh, yes the um, uh, this has gone on for hundreds of years where uh, Roman Catholic priest uh, government officials or other leaders in the community uh, usually those that are wealthy uh, are in, involved in uh, molesting and abusing children. Uh, the reason uh, that occurs is uh, people that that uh, abuse others. Uh, Eighty percent of uh, child molesters were molested when they were a child, so they're acting out. Uh, what happened to them? Um, and I, I saw this throughout the years over and over again. Uh, as chairman of the governor's task force on child abuse, I, I would find people who molested children. Uh, it, the, the problem is uh, children get very scared and they know that their abuser, their perpetrator, is uh, taller, bigger, and stronger than them, so they usually don't say anything. Even social workers, I've found, uh, that are trained in interviewing children who were abused, uh, social workers think that uh, their children will tell them if someone tried to hurt them, and that's not usually the case. The vast majority of the time, even the children of social workers that are molested uh, do not even tell their own parent who's a social worker. That's just the nature of children. Children are threatened to keep things secret. Uh, sometimes uh, they say, uh, the child says, I put that information in my pocket and I don't let it out. A, a typical person who molests a child, uh, they threaten uh, to hurt the child or they threaten to kill the mother of the child or a sibling, uh, and that's what usually happens. Um, I'm horrified that uh, when I read in the news uh, that a, a child is molested like the number one molester of a child is a stepfather. Uh, the number two is a father. The number three is a close relative of the child. And number four is a neighbor. Uh, so it's people that have regular contact with the child. And of course, a, a priest, a Roman Catholic priest, has regular contact with the child. Uh, and I've, I've counseled uh, people who were molested as a child by a Roman Catholic priest. And there's nothing more heart-wrenching than hearing uh, the parts of the child that were created to deal with this trauma and abuse. And they relive, even though they're an adult, they relive the experience as if it just happened an hour ago. And it's it's really horrible. So 
Pizzagate is just a modern terminology for a place where it is arranged for children to be molested. But uh, let me say this. If there is a term used to describe a phenomenon, then you know it is a serious problem. In Washington, D.C., uh, where government workers are, the Senate and the Congress, uh, in Washington, D.C., there is a term called chicken hawking. Now, a chicken hawk is a bird that kills the infants of other birds, and they they uh, steal uh, the baby chicks of other birds, and they kill it and eat it. And so chicken hawking is when adults uh, go and uh, pick up children during their lunch hour and molest the child. And sometimes the, the, ch the child has uh, what is usually referred to as a pimp uh, in, in Pizzagate. It's just a, a restaurant, but it's uh, somebody who acts as a pimp and for money arranges uh, sex with these children. And we live now in a day and time where uh, sex trafficking is found all over the world even in the United States, especially in major cities. And so uh, it's, a, it's a very serious problem. And unfortunately, uh, people in government are involved in molesting children. And they do this uh, usually their whole adult life until they die. Uh, I uh, spoke in Minnesota uh, years ago, and uh, many uh, uh, dissociative identity disorder counselors, I was there for the week training the counselors, and usually the very uh, tough cases of uh, uh, people that they counsel uh, with extreme dissociative uh, disorders, uh, they bring them to me for me to counsel them during lunch or any break or in the evening. And while I was there, I met three uh, women who all three, they did not know each other. They were from different states to come to this conference. And all three of them knew a, a well-respected uh, Democratic senator and he, when these uh, women were children, he had molested all three of them. And they described uh, certain marks on his body that would not be uh, generally known. And so that's how bad it has become in our society. And it seems like uh, people in government uh, just it's overlooked whenever they uh, commit horrible crimes against children. It's a horrible thing. And for the, uh, especially for those that have never looked into uh, this kind of thing and don't believe, um, you know, that there's anything to Pizzagate, can, can you share some examples? Um, and of course, you know, no names or anything like that, but just kind of a general story. Um, even like with, you know, there's the Hampstead children that recently came out and they accused their father um, of even having them involved in satanic ritual abuse where they were involved in the sacrifice of babies and how these two children um, were being basically pimped out by their dad and were molested by even their school principals and teachers and that this was just a, a common, even everyday occurrence for them. And they just did not know different 
uh, and thought that this was a normal kind of thing. Um, so can you talk of any, you know, any particulars just to, to share some details? Yeah, in, in the uh, in the Franklin cover up, I actually talked to one of the mothers. Uh, and uh, even uh, young boys are are kidnapped uh, to be uh, molested by uh, some uh, pervert, some sociopathic uh, pervert. Uh, and in the uh, in the Martin uh, Day uh, Daycare Center in California years ago, it was the longest uh, running uh, criminal case in the history of California. I talked to the I talked to one of the parents of a child that was molested in the daycare center, and I even talked to the prosecuting attorney. Um, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, the problem is is convincing a jury uh, that this person molested the child. Mm -hmm. uh, in in one case, a uh, a a a man uh, the father of a child uh, uh, kept molesting the daughter his daughter and uh, she was seven years old and and she had enough smarts she had uh, she had Skype which we are talking on right now and she hit uh, record so that it would record uh, her in her bed. And it showed the back of her father and the arm. Uh, a a woman who is a, a scientist on the blood vessels of an arm shows that it's like a fingerprint. It's very unique to each individual. And she showed in court uh, uh, irrefutable scientific evidence that he had molested his daughter, even though you could not see his face. And... Uh, the jury found the father not guilty of molesting the child, oh. even though this has happened over and over again. And even though the child had enough uh, sense uh, to record it on Skype. And, and when the jury uh, was asked after the court, they said, uh, we, we didn't have any trouble with the scientific evidence of the, uh, the veins in the arm of the person we just didn't believe the child uh, the child didn't seem believable enough i mean uh, that is that's horrible I, i'll tell you another case that just infuriates me uh two days ago uh the mother called me and i'll i'll tell you the case uh the the uh, the father had uh left the 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 mother and uh when when he left she was uh, pregnant and so the child was born and so for like five six years he didn't even have contact with his wife or his daughter so the mother uh, filed for divorce which is normal i mean he hadn't been there for five six years well when when uh, he received the divorce papers and saw that he had a, a, a little girl, he, he fought the divorce and he, uh, he sued for custody of his daughter, who is now by this time seven years old. So three different therapists, three different therapists interviewed this child and the child said over and over again, very clearly, that their father, when he got visitation every other week, that he would molest this six, this seven-year-old child. Well, here's what the psychotic judge ruled. And if I had his name, I would say it on air. Uh, that, that psychotic judge said that all three therapists of the child was wrong 
that the father had not molested the child. Uh, the police, police are not usually trained very well in cases of uh, child abuse. Uh, for example, of all the professions in the United States, uh, the number one profession that commits adultery is a police officer in America. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about that? So, yeah. uh, and a, a number of times, uh, you, you know, uh, prostitutes on the street, they, they push themselves on a, a policeman. And if he has uh, unresolved conflict from his childhood, he'll won't think anything of using uh, a prostitute or whatever. Uh, there's even cases where policemen uh, pull a woman over for a traffic offense and, and rapes her or blackmails her uh, into to sex. Well, the policemen said to the judge, now remember, they're not very well trained in investigating cases of child abuse. A police officer is not a trained counseling professional, not at all. So, uh, in, in fact, through the years of many cases of child abuse, now not every time, but the vast majority of the time, the police officers had been a hindrance to the solving of the case of child abuse. Right. And I hate to say that because I used to be great supporters of police officers, mm -hmm. but the last 10 years, I just, it, I've just seen so many cases through the years where police officers hinder uh, an actual case of a child being molested by the father or stepfather. And so the judge uh, ordered the mother not to have therapists talk to this child anymore. And uh, they insisted on a visitation of the father with the child for every other week. Oh my and God. so what does he do every other week? Every other week he molests the child. Now I'll mm -hmm. tell you who should be thrown in jail. That evil, dysfunctional judge. Mm -hmm. And I've known that many times through the years. The, the judge is, is grossly incompetent, and there needs to be a clear system in America that if a judge fails in his task, that he ought to be thrown in jail along with the child molester. And Absolutely. So is that a, a personal enough case for you that got me going yes. here? <laughs> yes. Um, this and is just this week. Uh, it's it's sad because it's an unfortunate because, as you said, we see case after case after case where the judge or the lawyer or attorney or the police officers, just like in the Franklin cover up, you even had um, you know high level politicians being. Uh, fingered and names, industrialists, entrepreneurs uh, being named by these children. And then the FBI comes and gets involved and is trying to protect the politicians. And so we see how the children are harassed um, and they are the ones to make, to be made like they are crazy and they're making all of this up. The same thing happened in the Hampstead case. Um, and it seems to be that, you know, they they have secret society connections, these fraternity Masonic orders, and that That's they are. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. you um, speak on that just a little? Well, uh, let me uh, let me simplify. People call this a uh, a conspiracy theory. Now, let me just say this. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy fact. Right. I counsel people almost every day of the year, except for Christmas. That's because I unplug my phone. I counsel uh, uh, people who are coming out of the Illuminati or one of the major secret societies. 
and uh, people need to put this clearly in their mind. The Illuminati, the uh, Freemasons, and the Vatican of the of Roman Catholicism. Now, notice I specified that they're all three intertwined. Uh, they they have they may have separate leadership, but they are all three intertwined. And so you will find all three organizations that in a premeditative fashion, they they actually, in an organized fashion, molest children. Now, uh, think of it this way. And uh, many young women out there today, she wants to marry a handsome, nice, rich guy. And that's what they think. That's their dream. That's their ideal of romance. What they don't understand is rich men that are handsome, even though they're married, they're hit on every day by attractive women. And so they have had years of, there's no nice way of saying it, they've had years of having sex with all of these gorgeous women. So after a while, normal sex is boring for them. Mm -hmm. So what they do is uh, they are into uh, kinky sex. They're into sodomy. They're into molesting uh, children. Uh, even in Hollywood, in Hollywood, there have actually been famous actors who have uh, molested children, but you don't hear about it in the evening news. I know, I know who they are. In fact, one famous actor was on many uh, television shows in which in one uh, uh, famous movie, he was a principal. And in another movie, he was on a, a, a family movie. And he is actually convicted of making child pornography. What do you think of that? That uh, does not at all surprise me. And I think that this is more prevalent than in the, the public has any idea um, that this kind of thing is going on all over the place. Um, and That's it's true. sad. Even, well, they were, um, you know, I was just going to say that even, um, uh, I forget, oh, uh, but anyways, uh, he was talking about how they even do snuff films, you yes, know, where the right. children is killed at the end, and then these tapes are sold underground um, to these people that are involved in and perpetuating these kind of crimes. And that's that's correct. So l let me answer your question about uh, uh, Freemasons uh, molesting children. Now, <clears throat> I've uh, I've talked to a lot of uh, Masons. My father, before he died, uh, was a member of the Masonic Lodge. My stepfather was a member of the Masonic Lodge. And, and they just joined it, as most people, as a good old boys club. And that's what they do. But it is the uh, 33rd degree Mason and higher that things change totally. Um, I'm counseling a woman now, and she was sexually abused in her life worse than anybody I have ever counseled in 43 years. Now, that is really bad. So let me tell you about her case. 
her father was a member of the Masonic Lodge. And by the way, uh, this has been documented since she was a child and in her adulthood, every counselor she's talked to, uh, this has shown over and over again to be true. Her medical records show this is true. When a man molests a child, uh, they cause uh, physical uh, problems in that child. And that uh, is the evidence that a prosecuting attorney wants uh, to show in court. And so by law, in all 50 states, when a child is injured and they're taken to a doctor or hospital, by law, they have 24 hours to report a suspected case of child abuse. School teachers or any school officials are also required by law to report any suspected cases of child abuse. Now, that uh, a f a school official may not be qualified or trained in diagnosing child abuse. That's why they're to report it and let people who are experts or specialists in this uh, to uh, talk to the child. <clears throat> and, and years ago, I w was on the state task force and I said that uh, uh, Court is an adult experience, not a child's experience. So their testimony should be allowed to be videotaped and as miscible in evidence in court. Well, it went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court agreed with me that yes, a child's testimony can be admissible uh, on videotape in a in a court of law. Now, so. Anyway, this girl, when she was eight years old, she was taken by her father to his local Masonic Lodge. And, and every, she, this girl was tied uh, to a low table. She was tied, her hands and her legs were tied to the four legs of the of the low lying table, and each of these dirty old perverts in that Masonic lodge took turns and molested her. Every one of them. Now, when a child is traumatized or abused, what happens is the the five senses of that child are, it's called a hypervigilant state, is so uh, heightened that uh, the brain records all the five senses so they can describe for you years later in detail uh, the people that were there. They can describe the smell in the room and all their five senses, they can describe it in detail. It is like a recorder. It's permanently recorded in the brain. And if, if people don't mess up that recording, then uh, that is pure unadulterated evidence. So, uh, so this I have had uh, probably close to uh, over a hundred children that I've counseled as an adult, as the adults, that were molested in a Masonic Lodge. Now, they can, uh, Lodge members can say whatever they want to, but all of these people do not know each other. And they describe exactly what the lodge looks like, uh, the rituals, and everything else in there. And 
uh, th this is horrible that it goes on in America. Now, I'm not saying that every Mason is a child molester. I'm not saying that. I'm saying at a certain level uh, that they worship Lucifer and they they're involved in molesting children. Now, you've already uh, talked about these 300 Roman Catholic priests who molested the child. Now, in, in the Vatican, the Vatican is a separate state. It's a separate country, and it goes by different laws. But there's been a number of times where uh, the Italian police uh, entered uh, the Vatican and arrested priests there at the Vatican uh, for molesting children. And the main, there, there's two main reasons why these uh, adult perverts will molest a child. Number one, it's easier to scare a child and tell them not to talk. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they do it because they, they're they normally insecure wimps without a backbone. They're not, they're not uh, real men. They are wussies. So they molest a child because they have a sense of power and control over the child. Well, that, that's a wimp's way out. That's no, that's no real control at all. It's, it is the ultimate evil bully uh, to molest a child who cannot defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and so in the Illuminati, they do the same thing. In fact, in rituals, uh, they tie a child to the altar and uh, they take turns molesting the child. And, uh, and in satanic cults, which is different than the Illuminati, the word Illuminati means the enlightened ones. Uh, Lucifer means the bright one. Uh, so the Illuminati worships Lucifer. Satanists are different. Now, uh, Christians are correct when they say Lucifer and Satan is the same person. Yes, but they would actually, if they were at a ritual, Lucifer would appear in a different form uh, than would Satan. I know that sounds strange for most uh, uh, Christians listening, but uh, Lucifer appears in the form of what's called the Baphomet. That's a French word. It's the goat's head, the uh, large hairy chest of a man, and the, uh, the hoof and feet of a goat. And the head is where the pentagram comes from. The two ears, the two horns, and the, the chin or the goatee, so that's five. So the pentagram means five, and that's where the goat's head comes from, the pentagram. So whenever they have a ritual, uh, they draw a pentagram on the, on the altar, and they perform rituals around the altar or ceremonies. Uh, so what they often do as a part of their ritual, they molest the child. Now, let me say this. Every city I've ever lived in, from the day I was born, they have satanic cults in that city, even if it's in a rural area, a country area. And... I, I remember I used to pastor in a small town 
population 720. And those church going people would think there was no satanic cult in that little hick town. But I remember uh, one morning at two o'clock, the sheriff called me. He said, Dr. Bailey, uh, I want you to come down uh, to my office. And I said, why? He, he woke me up. He said, I have a girl that's demon possessed. I said, how do you know? Now, this is the sheriff. but And he said, look, just believe me, she's demon possessed. And so I uh, threw my clothes on. I went down to the sheriff's office. I walked in his office and he was right. This girl is demon possessed. <clears throat> she had been molested at the local rural satanic cult meeting. She managed to escape miraculously. She was actually in a, a Free Will Baptist Church's uh, deacon's daughter. And oh my gosh. she, so she somehow managed to escape. But during this ritual, they have what's called demon calling rituals and revelations, where demons are summoned to enter the body of this child. Oh my gosh. It, it's, it's really horrible. So therefore, to deal with dissociative identity disorder caused by satanic ritual abuse, you almost always see uh, demons involved in the person. And that's the reason. Now, how did I learn so much about Satanism and witchcraft? And so, well, I'll, let me tell you. Because I was never scared of these people. I was never scared of demons because I believe what the Bible said about demons. Uh, that when Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago, he disarmed Colossians 2.15. He disarmed uh, Satan and all of the forces of evil. So they don't have any weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but I led a lot of witches and Satanists to Christ. And almost every day I counsel people coming out of the Illuminati. And uh, my, my faith in the belief in God only strengthened uh, counseling these tormented souls. Uh, because when sin abounds, the grace of God does much more abound, as the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, I'll never forget, one year I led the head uh, Satanist in the county to Christ. And wow, wow. Uh, I'll never forget what he said after he accepted Christ. And I baptized him that night at church. Uh, he said, does that mean I cannot meet with, with my 300 witches on Halloween? I said, yes, that's right. <laughs> the 300 uh, witches that worship Satan and cast spells was what he was under his control. Wow. wow. Now, that's serious stuff, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, if, I was just going to ask you if you would elaborate a little bit uh, on that as well. Okay, I'll be glad to. What happened is, one Sunday I was preaching on the power of God was greater than the power of Satan. And one of the women in the church brought this real tall guy with long hair, dressed in all black. <clears throat> and I would say the power of God is far greater than the power of Satan. And he was up in the balcony sitting with this girl. And every time he would shake his head like this, no, no, no. And you could, you could hear it mumbling under his breath. He would say, no, no, no. So that just egged me on. And a few more minutes later, I would say, the power of Christ is greater than the power of Satan. He would shake his head, no, no, no. And I just kept it up the whole sermon. I, I was, uh, I, I'm a glutton for punishment. So <clears throat> after the service, 
uh, school teachers and people in the community came up to me, uh, preach, preacher, did you know that uh, the head uh, Satanist in the city was here today at church? And I go, no, but I kind of figured that. So I, uh, the girl's father owned a garbage collection uh, company and he had huge biceps. He was bald as a is a, a cue ball, but he he was real strong. He had huge biceps. So after church, I grabbed him and I said, uh, "Your daughter brought the head Satanist uh, in this city uh, to church today." He said, "Really?" I said, "Yes." I said, "I tell you what, I want you to do." I said, "This afternoon at three o'clock." I want you to bring him to my house. And he said, how am I supposed to do that? I said, that's not my problem. <laughs> I said, that's your problem. I said, I said, let me see your arm. So he flexed his bicep. I said, I said, I'm telling you again, that is your problem. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you have to, uh, Shanghai him and throw him in your trunk. I want you to get him at my house at three o'clock. So sure enough, at three o'clock, he dropped off this guy and he wanted to make sure that I knew that he, that garbage man brought this Satanist to my house exactly at three. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, thank you very much. And so Here's what I told him. I had, I had uh, uh, several people already in my house praying for me, and we bound uh, the demons that were in him. Uh, so I said to him, I said, I said, there's one thing I've noticed about sa about Satanism. He said, what's that? I said, Satan hurts his followers, but but Christ loves his followers. Mm -hmm. He said, I hate to admit it, but you're right. And then he said, he said, the principality demon over this city is my personal spirit guide. And I said, I knew what it meant, but I wanted to hear what he said. I said, what is, what's the spirit guide? He said, the spirit guide is my personal demon that, that guides me and tells me what to do. So he said, uh, he said, I am depressed a lot. And, um, he said, uh, I, I think I would like to receive Christ because I want to be loved by God because my spirit guide doesn't like me. It, I get depressed because it causes problems all the time for me. It gets a kick out of scaring me all hours of the day and night mm -hmm. and it'll just come through the wall and, and, and frighten me. So I, I said, okay. So uh, he would... I would <clears throat> tell him the uh, the prayer to pray to receive Christ, and he would get along a few words, and, and demons would attack him, and he would go uh, as close as I can explain it. He would go in a catatonic tonic trance uh, caused by demons, and <clears throat> he would stare into empty space, and he he could not hear nor speak nor nothing. He was like paralyzed. So I would have people pray. And every few minutes, this thing happened. So it took an hour for him to get through the prayer of salvation. But he, he finally did. And we then we could bind the demons and, and got rid of them. <laughs> the funny thing, uh, a few weeks later, I was visiting people in the community. And I visited his father, who was an atheist, and his mother, who was not a Christian. And uh, they were, uh, I can understand why he had become a Satanist. 
but uh, I tried to witness to his mother, but she seemed to have a, a blockage. And just then he uh, came in the door to, to visit her. And I called him by name. I said, uh, come in here. I said, I want you to tell your mother about you accepting Christ. So he did. Wow. And she said, you know, I've noticed a difference this last month that he is a totally different person. I said, well, wouldn't you like to accept Christ like your, like your grown son? She says, you know, I would. So right then, she accepted Christ as her Savior. Wow. And, and what was so great is you can tell a person is really saved because they want other people saved. Uh-huh. Well, the head warlock over the whole county, he was the warlock over the city. But one of his good friends was the head warlock over the whole county. So I said to him, I said, I, I want you to talk uh, uh, to the head warlock over the whole county. And he's, I said, I, I'd like you to bring him to my house. He says, okay. He says, uh, I'll bring him there tonight at seven o'clock. I said, that'd be great. So that night at seven o'clock, uh, this guy came there. He he had long hair dressed in black too. And we came in and we just talked casually for a while. And I, I talked about demons with him. I mean, here's the head warlock over the county. And I'm talking to him about demons. And I said, what's the largest demon you ever saw? He says, largest demon I ever saw was from China. It's called Demi Gorgon. I said, well, how big is it? I said, he said, it appears as a dragon and it's as tall as the house. Wow. And so we talked about demons and he said, uh, he said to summon demons, I don't have to uh, uh, go through uh, rituals or ceremonies. I said, well, what do you do? He said, uh, he held his two hands in front of them in the air like he was going to praise the Lord and he said he uh, with a beckoning of his hands he said I just called the demon by name and I said come here and he says the demons immediately come to him uh -huh. and so we talked about demons and uh, so uh, I, I gave him the plan of salvation and he said, uh, I don't want to accept Christ right now. He said, but I'll think about it. I says, I appreciate it. So we got up and, and he started going, uh, to my door and I said, let me just ask you one question before you go. He said, what's that? I said, did you bring the, uh, the prince? Uh, the prince demon that you have over the county with you in my house. He says, no. I said, why didn't you? He said, the faith in this house was so great. If I had brought my uh, uh, prince, he called it a prince, into the house. Prince is short for principality that the Bible says. He said it. If I brought my prince into the house, the faith in this house was so great, he would have been immediately sent to the pit. Now, I'd never heard that before, but he knew what he was talking about. He was the head the Satanist of the county. So I said, do you mind telling me where your prince uh, demon is? He says, it's over there on the corner underneath the streetlight. I said, okay. So he, he drove home and the whole time he was going home, his uh, prince demon, which is over the whole county. Uh, uh, hold on, Dr. Bailey. Okay. 
We'll be right back, everyone, for a second hour. For a second hour, I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on freedomslips.com. And I am honored to be interviewing Dr. Preston Bailey about satanic ritual abuse and the agenda of the New World Order. Uh, in this hour, we'll be speaking a little bit more about the details uh, and also what Dr. Bailey has learned in interviewing and counseling some of these individuals as well as how it ties together with the coming reign of the Antichrist and our being at the end of days. Uh, Dr. Bailey, I want to turn it back over to you, allow you to finish up your story. And if you would, can you lead it into also the blood sacrifice and the, um, because the Bible speaks about that as well and how the elite, you know, they would pass their children through the fire um, offer them in sacrifice to Moloch, and yes. that these kind of things are still being perpetuated uh, by these same Illuminati bloodlines, even in this day and age. Yes, that's that's uh, true. So, uh, uh, to finish that uh, story, uh, the head warlock for the uh, county left my house, and when he uh, drove home the prince demon over the county uh, got in the car and the whole way home cursed him out and says, the blood of, of Jesus is nothing but urine. And he said, don't listen to what that preacher had to say. And that uh, prince demon was so furious with him for talking to me. And even when he got home, he would open a, 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 the kitchen cabinet to get some to drink and the demon would uh, appear in the cabinet and and curse him out. And everywhere it went, for the next hour, he just cursed him out. And then he was thinking, uh, before he uh, went to bed, he got to thinking. He said, now my demon has never been that mad before. And this demon had came to him when he was five years old. Mm. And his parents were so scared of him, they would not go in his room, his bedroom, at five years of age. And they would put crucifixes all down the hall. Uh, and, you know, it's stuff that didn't work. So <clears throat> anyway, he got to thinking, my demon has never been this angry. So that means what that preacher said must have been true. So he prayed and received Christ as his savior. Uh, the next Sunday, he was baptized at the church, <clears throat> and he actually helped me, uh, people that had been involved in Satanism, he helped them get out. Wow. And, and so he taught me uh, exactly what goes on in Satanism. And uh, so that's what happened. So the way I learned what goes on in, in witchcraft, Satanism, or the Illuminati, is I've counseled people and helped them, and then they taught me. So what happens in in the Illuminati? They, uh, they have a human sacrifice on the four, it's called the four uh, high holidays of the year. And they get their child sacrifice from one of two places. Number one, there's a woman in the in the in the cult group whose job is called being a breeder. A breeder that means uh, during a ritual they have uh, multiple sex with her, and then uh, eventually she'll become pregnant, 
and uh, when the child is born, they will sacrifice this child to Satan. Then they uh, cut out the heart and uh, they pass the heart around and they're supposed to eat it. Uh, so what happens is uh, the body of the person they sacrifice, uh, they, they dig a, a deep hole, they throw what's left of the body in there. And one person has the job of pouring gasoline or kerosene on it and lighting it a fire. And when it goes out, they pour more gas and they do it until all the remains of the body is nothing but ashes. That's why they hardly ever find the body. And the only time they would ever find any human remains is if the person who's responsible uh, for uh, destroying the body gets lazy and doesn't do their job. And that's the only time uh, a, a body is ever found. So, and the second way they get a human sacrifice is uh, they kidnap a child in the community. So they drive along the street. When a child uh, gets off the bus and they've got to walk like a block away to go home, uh, usually it's like a little girl. They kidnap them and they use them in human sacrifice. But in large cities, there is a place uh, where a lot of these uh, children are taken and they're held captive there. Uh, so it's, it's really bad. Now, let me say this. There are government officials who have the responsibility of prosecuting people for crimes and they're in they're in a satanic cult uh, many of these cult groups worship as you mentioned earlier Moloch who is the god of child sacrifice it is a a hollow brass uh, image with outstretched arms. They have a, a fire in the belly. They put the, the young child on the outstretched arms and the fire consumes the child and kills it. And that's how they worship uh, Molech. Uh, but in most states, uh, state, there is at least at the highest level, uh, judges or uh, prosecutors who are part of either a satanic cult or uh, members in the Illuminati if they are one of the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. And these are ancient families uh, that go back uh, to the time of Nimrod in ancient Babylon. Uh, you hear people talk about the Illuminati beginning in 1776 with Adam Weishaupt in Bavaria, Germany. Uh, that is only the Bavarian Illuminati. That is not the Illuminati. Uh, so the 13 bloodlines are from all over the world, 13 major bloodlines that go back to Nimrod. Uh, in, in fact, uh, many times when they draw Nimrod, they draw uh, Baphomet, 
which is the the physical manifestation of Lucifer. So a satanic cult worships Satan, the Illuminati worship Lucifer. That's the difference. That's the technical difference. The Illuminati is 13 bloodlines and uh, they are involved in high level programming. So they have programmers that that charge a lot of money and when a child is ritually abused they do it to create such trauma in the child's mind that an altered personality is created and then that altered personality is programmed to do a specific job for the cult and in the illuminati that that altered personality as it's called is programmed to do a job for the new world order or for the Illuminati. So there's there's many types of altered personalities that are created and programmed. Uh, there is a new world order pro, uh, programs and alters, uh, and they're programmed to carry out the agenda for the new world order. So they have an international job uh, involving the New World Order uh, to help create a one world government, a one world military, a one world economic system, and uh, a one world government. Now, we know the time is getting close, and I'll tell you how. You're not going to hear this on the evening news. But the last five years in the world, uh, there have been hundreds of astronomers or astrophysicists murdered. <clears throat> Now, let me say that again. The last five years, all over the world, some of the most famous astronomers or astrophysicists have been murdered. They did not die by accident. It was clear, judged by the police, it was clear that they were brutally murdered by assassins who have never been found to this day. Not one of the assassins in the world who murdered hundreds of these world famous astronomers and astrophysicists have been murdered. In fact, one van filled with six astronomers and astrophysicists, all six of them were brutally murdered in that van. Now, that means the van did not crash. They were murdered. Uh -oh. In fact, the, the, the top astrophysicist in the world, not only was he murdered, but the very next day, his astrophysics laboratory was burned to the ground. Uh -oh. And the, you don't hear about this normally in the news. So evidently, the Illuminati has planned for some big event, some call it the disclosure, but it's some big event that's probably going to come the next uh, few years, that's going to come from the sky, that there's going to be something that is unusual. <clears throat> And it's going to come from the air. Now, what's interesting is the Roman Catholic Church has out west, or one of the highest mountains in the U.S., they have a telescope called Lucifer. Right. And that is an acrostic, which means each letter represents something it is a basically it is a thermal telescope 
So something is going to come in the air to Earth that can be seen on a thermal telescope. Now, most telescopes are not a thermal telescope that sees the heat or energy in something in the air. So something, <clears throat> so the next few years, we need to keep our eyes on the sky because something is going to, some big worldwide event is going to occur from the air and is going to come down to Earth. Wow. We can speculate on what that is. I'm just telling everybody who listens to your broadcast. That is what is going to happen <clears throat> because the Illuminati have had it planned for years. And the second group of people that have been murdered by the hundreds in the last five years, over 300 bankers have been murdered. And the reason being is the Illuminati has has all of their bankers in place around the world and uh, they're getting ready <clears throat> to have a one world economic system. So the Britain Woods uh, system as it exists now in the United States is going to change with the Federal Reserve System and there's going to be a new worldwide global economic system that's going to occur probably in the next 10 years. And so because yeah, of these two it. things, we know it's going to happen. Right. That's one of the things that we have been warning about uh, with regard to the strong delusion and the coming of the Antichrist, because it's clear in Scripture that we have a false messiah come first and that they try to counterfeit what will be the true second coming in order to deceive the world. And that is part of the, uh, the, the grand deception that Satan pulls out, kind of his final trump card for uh, leading everybody astray. And because there's no love of the truth, many people are led astray. And so that's one of the, in my opinion, one of the most important things with regard to the study of prophecy and coming to understand that we are at the end of days and that all of these things which the Bible warns us about are coming to light. And the amazing thing about your work is that you are hearing confirmation of biblical prophecy from the New World Order elites, as well as the demonic influences that are upon them, uh, the fallen angels who are perpetuating this and setting it up with regard to the New World Order. And so if you would, can you speak more about that too, Dr. Pitt? Yes. Um, uh, uh, that, that is correct. Um, uh, the Bible says... Uh, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son, uh, Son of God, be. Well, yes. So you have to look what happened in the days of Noah. Right. In the days of Noah, uh, there was much uh, immorality and debauchery in the world, and also was Genesis six. Yes. It says, and the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they produced uh, giants. Uh, the Hebrew word is nephi'in. And what happened is, to the, the Bible in Genesis 6 only discusses in just a few verses what happened. Uh, now, I believe all 66 books in the Bible is the inspired word of God, but Absolutely. that doesn't mean we are to discard other historical books. Yes. There, I have, at my house, I have over 70,000 books. Wow. And I read very fast. As fast as I can turn a page, I can read. And in 20 minutes, I could read a 
a 250 page book. Uh, so there's many, uh, there's much archaeological evidence uh, about things that happened in history, and there's much historical evidence, which means it's written in history books. I think anybody that wants to know what happened in Genesis 6 when the sons of God came down to earth, if they want to know the details about it, they need to read one of the uh, religious historical books, and that's called the Book of Enoch, E-N-O-C-H. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, every, I attended uh, uh, the largest seminary in the world with the greatest theological library in the world, and I'm just telling you, nobody ever told me about the Book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And the things that I've said today, they don't talk about in seminary. Right. So I had to learn on my own. That's why I have so many books. Uh, the real history of the world and how God worked on earth. Yes. The book of Enoch is, is just a historical book. So don't get uptight about it. It's just a book that amplifies Genesis 6 verses 1 through 4. Uh. And it tells this. It gives the name of the sons of God mentioned in Genesis 6. And they're called the Watchers. There's many type of fallen beings recorded in the Bible. One of them are called the Evil Watchers. Uh, and so the book of Enoch uh, names all 200 fallen watchers. Now, I think that's significant, even though I was never taught that in, in seminary. I have two earned doctor's degrees, and I was never taught that book in any one of those degrees from seminaries. Wow. And, and I'm horrified about that. I'm embarrassed for all the seminaries in the world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And it, it names the 200 watchers. It names all 200 of them. And it, it goes into detail. Now, we, so since I've graduated from seminary, I've uh, studied archaeology around the world. And I uh, came to the startling truth that there have literally been thousands, not hundreds, thousands of bones of giants. Right. That 2,000 uh, skeletal remains of giants have actually been sent to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., from the late 1890s to the present. But the director of the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., dogmatically believed in evolution. I mean, evolution. <laughs> right. And so, therefore, he did not want to rewrite the history books. So he either destroyed uh, those 2,000 bones of giants or he put them in a packing crate at the back of the warehouse so they could never find them. Right. Now, he did a great disservice to the public and he did a horrible disservice to the history books and the science books. Now, when it comes to evolution, I discovered by actually attending the Smithsonian Institute that there's actually 200 different theories of evolution. And while I was there, I was looking at uh, the, the skeletal remains of so-called uh, old prehistoric 
uh, men type creatures, humanoids. And then suddenly the woman that worked at the Institute opened the glass display and took out this one skeletal remains. So I said, ma'am, if you don't mind, why are you taking that out? Here's what she said. She said, we've just discovered that these skeletal remains is not correct, that this was uh, uh, defrauded. The person who claimed he discovered these bones, he actually uh, made them, and this was a total hoax. Now, <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> That's oh, wow. when I was at the Smithsonian Institute. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually uh, counseled one woman in the Illuminati. And here's what she told me one day. She said, uh, uh, about five years ago, she said, my house... Uh, burned and it affected one part of the house and uh, Illuminati constructionists came in and they they put these strange things underneath the uh, foundation of the house in that part of the basement and she said uh, what that is she said uh, uh, Nephilim, uh, when they're uh, created, when they are are birthed, uh, which is they they take <clears throat> uh, these fallen creatures. Uh, TV says it's aliens, <clears throat> right? Extraterrestrial. Yeah, but. I say they're, uh, she calls them, she says, cosmic creatures. Mm. Uh, uh, the Bible calls it uh, fallen, uh, fallen higher ranking uh, angelic creatures. Right. <clears throat> so uh, they impregnate women and uh, three months after conception, they come back and they take uh, the fetus out. They put it in a a special incubator, and then when it becomes, it grows very fast. So when it becomes uh, a large size, they come to her basement and they they'll stay for a week. And there's these uh, these energy kind of lamps uh, that they uh, that these uh, nephilim to simplify they, these nephilim uh, get underneath them, <clears throat> and it it helps them get their strength, and then uh -huh. they leave. Uh -huh. And so they stay there for a week under these special kind of lamps. Now, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's very fascinating. Let me ask you a question along that line as well, Dr. <laughs> Bailey, because um, it seems like um, the abduction phenomena seems to follow some of these elitist bloodlines and that uh, a lot of them are... Uh, you know, they have these hybrid children and uh, because of certain blood types or whatever, that they are uh, able to um, interrelate with these demonic beings. And so do you think that um, the, because we know they are demons, uh, fallen yes, angels, right. they're not right. extraterrestrials from that's right. uh, somewhere out there, but they've been here trapped here with us uh, ever since the beginning of the fall of Satan and all of that. But yes, anyways, right. um, do you think that that's why these bloodlines are monitored and also because of the generational curses of what their fathers have done, the ritual abuse that they perpetuate upon 
their children, that that makes them more apt and uh, targeted for yeah. this kind of thing? Yeah, you're, you're exactly correct. Uh, uh, there, there's 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, 13 families. And the key thing, uh, this is just the way the Illuminati thinks. It's not the way you and I think, but, it, but this is the way the Illuminati thinks. That everything is tied up in the bloodline because of ancestral curses and uh, genetic engineering or genetic modification mm -hmm. uh, to these bloodlines. And what it does is uh, as they genetically uh, engineer the DNA and RNA in their bloodlines, uh, they, they create in their children a, a person that is easier to dissociate, which also means it is easier to program them to be what is called mind control slaves. Um, and they say everything centers around the blood. And um, so it's very important uh, who the father and the mother is because they go into great detail about who can marry whom. Right. Selective. They are selective. So therefore, in the Illuminati, their mate is ranged. It is not it's not chosen. Um, so they they will mix two bloodlines because they're looking for a specific ability in the children that are born as a result of the combination of those two bloodlines coming together. Um, so there's no uh, th there's no great love in the Illuminati marriages. They're just right. arranged. Right. And so that is why uh, for the man, it's nothing for them to commit adultery or to have sex with a child. Uh, and they say to the child, uh, this is for your benefit. And they say, uh, uh, it's best for, for the common good. That's the kind of way they think, the philosophy. Crazy. They're doing this for the common good. So yeah. each person, uh, through the bloodline and the genetic modification, is designed to have very specific skills. So even before the child is born, they know specifically what that child is going to do, what their job will be in the Illuminati, whether they're to be a banker, whether they are to be in charge of submarines for the U.S. military, whether they're to be in charge of submarines for the Russian military. Uh, I want to remind people <clears throat> that after World War II, Immediately at the end of the war, uh, the Illuminati bloodlines were actually making plans for the Fourth Reich. Mm. And uh, they say that uh, the, uh, the flying equipment, uh, the flying aircraft that the Nazi scientists created was superior to any other country in the world. And so the reason they lost World War II is because of a leadership failure, which refers to Adolf Hitler and his, his generals. Uh, they say that the, uh, the soldiers did not fail and the scientists did not fail. It was the leadership at the top. Uh, now, uh, in the, the Russian and the U.S. military, People at the very top 
in the military are are people that are in the Illuminati bloodlines. Yes. yes. So uh, a person that is in the Illuminati, they may not even know that that is their job. Because there is a what's called an amnesic barrier between that altar that is programmed to do their job for the New World Order or for the Illuminati or for the uh, weak Christians calling the Antichrist. The Illuminati doesn't call him the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. They look at him as the Messiah. <clears throat> the army of Iran in the Middle East. They say that the Praetorian Guard of the military in Iran is the army for the Muslim Messiah, the Mahdi. And Iran says the Muslim Messiah, the Mahdi, is going to return in the air. Now remember, I've already said there's been hundreds of astronomers and astrophysicists who have been murdered because they don't want astronomers looking deep into the sky because something that's going to come. So it will probably be uh, the, the, the false uh, Christ, the false Messiah who Christians call the Antichrist. And that's probably going to be the one who does it. Now, let me also say that in satellites around the Earth, there's thousands of them, around Illuminati satellites, there is holographic uh, equipment attached to the satellites that can actually create a holographic image in space in the ionosphere so that when we look at it from Earth, we can see what we would interpret as a Messiah coming to Earth. And it also has uh, attached to it, it has audio and the scientific explanation for that is technology that is already in existence it is called voice to skull technology right, right. there's there's only a few books written that even talk about voice to skull technology one of the people who actually uh for the CIA created voice to skull technology was Dr. Robert Duncan. And he was uh, programmed as a child. He was ritually abused. And so he, he created a lot of these things and that was his Illuminati job. Uh, because of the way his brain was designed, engineered, uh, that he, he created a lot of this technology. Now, for those who doubt this, uh, they can look at the book. Uh, it's called Project Soul Catcher, S-O-U-L, Project Soul Catcher, Volume 2. And... Anybody who reads it should expect to be shocked because they'll learn that what I've talked about is not conspiracy theory, but it's a conspiracy fact. Right. Uh, right. Many, uh, many leading uh, politicians around the world uh, the last 20 years have talked about the New World Order. Uh, so, anybody who doesn't believe a, a new world order is coming, they need to not be so naive. 
the new world order is simply a orders given to the world by this uh, globalist uh, secretive power elite, some call it the cabal, and they're going to create an authoritarian one world government that will replace the sovereign nation states uh, that's in America or in Europe. And so they have <clears throat> they have uh, great details and uh, <clears throat> if you if you if you don't believe it I urge you to go to the International Denver Airport. I've been there. <clears throat> I went there to Denver uh, a short time after uh, the uh, that uh, man went into this theater and brutally killed people that was in the theater. Now, what's interesting, he actually got a scholarship uh, from the National Health Institute. And I was there a short time after the murder. And if you study about uh, mind control programming, you'll see uh, that the man arrested for the theater murders has every 100% of the characteristics of a mind control slave as the Illuminati calls them. But at the Denver airport are these huge murals and these are the New World Order murals and if you go uh, look around the airport you will see in concrete uh, a plaque dedicating that airport, and it is called the New World International Airport. And it has, if you go to where the baggage claim area is, is one of the large uh, murals, and it is a picture of a Fourth Reich soldier with a gas mask on and a modern advanced machine gun and there's this row of mothers crying because their baby has been killed and gassed while the city in the background is burning down now that's a horrible picture but that's at the baggage claim at the denver international airport crazy, so crazy. It, the truth is stranger than fiction right so at the end of World War II, half of the Nazi scientists went to Russia and half of the Nazi scientists came to the United States. <clears throat> now, during World War II, uh, the organization that later became the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, uh, they declared that Werner von Braun was the most dangerous man in the world during World War II. At the end of World War II, the CIA, in Operation Paperclip, arranged for Werner von Braun and several thousand other Nazi scientists to secretly come to the United States they put Werner von Braun working on uh, the uh, NASA rockets, and it was Werner von Braun that helped design and build uh, the rockets that send the U.S. to the moon. And uh, within 10 years, Werner von Braun became the director of NASA. Now, who would have guessed when the CIA declared Werner von Braun during World War II as the most dangerous man in the world that 10 years later he would be the director of NASA in the United States? 
Now, that's just beyond imagination. Right. And I actually lived uh, near Warner Von Braun, and as a kid, we drove by his house. Oh, wow. And every, every smart person has their idiosyncrasies. And so Werner von Braun got a cement and paved his front yard, and he painted it green. Oh that God. way he didn't have to cut the grass. <laughs> but Werner von Braun, uh, a, a pastor <clears throat> uh, there, uh, I believe of Sonsville, happened to visit his home he was visiting in the community he stopped by Warner Brown Warner Brown Brown's house and actually led him to Christ wow. and, and after that Warner Von Braun would take his Bible to work and leave it on his desk and read it every day at NASA now isn't that a wild story it is absolutely now I actually uh, counsel a woman who uh, who's uh, who has a relative that that was a scientist that worked with Werner von Braun and he said that uh, uh, there's there's things as far as aircraft that the government does not want to be made public. That's what he said. Uh, Dr. Bailey, I have a question before we get to the end of the show. Okay. I wanted to ask you if you thought that there was a distinction as far as uh, bloodline between, a, for instance, Cain and Seth, and if the bloodlines, the elites themselves, because uh, I know that they believe that, you know, as far as the fallen angels, that they are the children of them. And uh, But do you think that there is a physical progeny of the devil here? And do the elites believe that um, themselves? Um. Uh, let me work from the present and go back. <clears throat> I okay. think it's similar. We got five uh, minutes, just so you know. Okay, the people that that I counsel uh, through the years that are in the Illuminati, they say the Antichrist is already alive and he was made in a test tube and he was genetically engineered uh, through mixing uh, the DNA. The, the that's found in the blood, the DNA of certain people in history, and it was uh, genetically wow. engineered together, and that is the Antichrist, and that uh, when he uh, he's born, and that uh, he the Bible says the Antichrist will have no desire for women, and. That's what they say about him. Wow. So everyone I talk to say that he is alive. And what they did do is there is what is called scientifically the space-time continuum. And uh, because of their scientific advancement, uh, uh, certain people very specific in the Illuminati have been able to go back in time along the space-time continuum and get DNA from certain people to create the Antichrist. Wow. That is amazing. It, it makes me wonder about uh, even the Iraq war because the invasion took place um, right after they had discovered the tomb of Gilgamesh. That's and, right. And he was a giant. And uh, I do believe that, you know, 
they are trying to get the DNA of these giants as well uh, for exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, that uh, that's exactly correct. The first thing special forces did after the Iraq war is to find the tomb of Gilgamesh, like you said. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they got all of that DNA to create the Antichrist. So he's alive now. And he was genetically engineered to be very intelligent and to be a great speaker. Right. And to have supernatural abilities, I'm sure. Yes. yes. So he is he is what I would call uh, uh, something almost like what's called an introject. An introject is a an entity that is placed inside people with SRADID, and it is a combination of different DNA and alters of other people and part demon, and it's programmed to do a certain job inside of people. Wow. So that's something close to what the Antichrist is. Dr. Baylor, we've got just about two minutes remaining. I want to give you a chance to give out your website and contact information once more. And also just mention your book. And then if you would, sir, we'd like to invite you back um, even in a few weeks if you have the availability so that. Okay, well, more. well uh, thank you so much. Uh, my website that tells about some of these things is spiritualwarfarecenter.com. That's spiritualwarfarecenter, C-E-N-T-E-R.com. And I tell a little bit about dissociative identity disorder and spiritual warfare issues. And if they need to contact me, they can do it through bridemovement.com, B-R-I-D-E-M-O-V-E-M-E-N-T, bridemovement.com. And uh, if a, a woman that worked for the Justice Department, uh, one place that I spoke, afterwards she came to me and she said, if the American people knew what was actually going on in the government of the United States of America, they would throw out everybody in Washington, D.C. and start over. Mm -hmm. oh, and so she was a Christian that worked for the Justice Department. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I could, I could totally see that. And that would be the only way, really, that... Uh, I mean, we need a restart like that. But, of course, it's going to take Christ coming back uh, to redeem and to rectify everything. Because that, he said, unless correct. the days be shortened, there be no flesh left. But final comment from you, Doctor. Yeah, I wrote the book, Spiritual Warfare, Defeating the Forces of Darkness, which is on Amazon. You can either put in Spiritual Warfare or my name, Dr. Preston Bailey. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Uh, we'll definitely, if you have availability, have you back in a few weeks. Okay, thank you. All right. God bless all. Good night. Good night.